Hey everyone, today we're going to cover the Palkidi RGB10 Max 2, the second edition of the RGB10 Max, which was released earlier this year. Well, I say second edition, but although it's called the RGB10 Max 2, it essentially is the same old RGB10 Max with a different shell. That's not necessarily a bad thing, as I did personally really like the original, and Palkidi have used the opportunity to address some, but not all, of the annoyances with the original shell. The RGB10 Max 2 comes with the same RK3326 chip as the original. If you've got the original, then you're not getting anything additional spec-wise at all. Palkidi are very obviously aware of the fact that this is essentially just a reshell of the original RGB10 Max, because even the packaging is just a slight refresh. I mean, both the original Max and Max 2's colour options on the side, the description of the original Max known colour has just been called orange, which certainly is. On to the new shell then. I was a great fan of the original RGP10 Max, and the new RGP10 Max 2 shell is even better. It looks incredibly professional, and in terms of pure design, it's probably my favourite Palkidi handheld design so far. The controls in terms of input feel very similar to the original in terms of responsiveness and materials used, but they are definitely more comfortable. This is because there's more travel with all the buttons due to them being raised over the original RGP10 Max, and this translates to a more comfortable control overall. The move to a switch style shoulder button design is both a blessing and a curse here. The L2 and R2 uh, buttons are massive improvements, but the L1 and R1 shoulder buttons are just a letdown. They're hard to press and the least comfortable aspect of the RGB 10's Max 2's controls. The back grips are really nice too and, the, and super comfortable. Overall, the RGB 10 Max 2's controls are very good, with the small shoulder buttons being the only downside to an otherwise very comfortable layout. Switching to a quick teardown now, what's super disappointing is that the RGB10 Max 2 still has the single mono speaker, which is one of the biggest downsides to the original, and something that should have been addressed with this iteration. A neat thing of note before moving on is to highlight the board mentions the name Max Pro version 1.1, which ironically I think the RGB10 Max Pro would have been a better name for it, considering the minimal internal improvements per hour. So for, for those considering which model to go for, I thought it would be useful to compare both the original RGB10 Max alongside the RGB10 Max 2. As mentioned, the difference are, differences are essentially cosmetic when it comes down to it, but the RGB10 Max 2 is definitely more comfortable out of the two, which the original being a very comfortable handheld to play for long per longer periods anyway. On top, everything's pretty much in the same place, lined up, but you'll notice the volume buttons have been improved with the RGB10 Max 2. Width-wise, there's barely anything in it, but the RGB10 Max 2 has the more comfortable grips on the back. The original does have the more silicone-like rubber finish to its shell, which has been dropped completely for the RGB10 Max 2, and with the RGB10 Max 2 looking a lot more professional for it. What I thought would be a really neat test to see is if the original custom firmware works completely out of the box in the RGB10 Max 2. So I've taken the micro SD card out of the original and placing it into the RGB10 Max 2 to see if everything boots up as expected. As you can see, Retro Oz boots and loads up fine and pretty much everything looked great until I booted into the ports where the analog controls were all inverted which was super weird, but hopefully a very quick fix. So just before I move on, I just wanted to show off a side-by-side -side teardown of the original and the RGB10 Max 2, just to show off the minimal changes actually under the shell. If you're buying the RGP10 Max 2 as a gift, everything is out of the box with a pretty decent experience. All the gameplay footage I've captured is using the original stock firmware that's come with the RGP10 Max 2, but there is a number of mature custom firmwares available for it that I'd advise you to check out and try as they do, as always, bring a number of neat improvements to both the UI and emulation experience. Anyway, I'll leave you to some gameplay now and come back to some ways at the end.
So to summarise, and I've said it many times during this review, the RGB 10 Max 2 is a shell refresh of the original. We have the original, there's very little reason to upgrade, especially at over the $100 price point. And there's still minor disappointments which could have easily been corrected, like the mono speaker, silly little front shoulder buttons, and although my unit seems to be fine, I'd recommend you purchase from a reputable retailer as the build quality from the original was mixed. With the majority being fine, but quite a few suffering from build mistakes like the screen not fitting properly. That all being said, if you are purchasing an RK3326 gaming handheld for the first time, Pelkidi's RGB10 Max 2 is one of the best and most comfortable options available to you, and should definitely be a contender when considering getting into the handheld space. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.